Hello, welcome to class in quotation marks. Um, we are talking this week about instruction as motivation and management. Um, an engaged student is less likely to be someone who needs to be managed, but we don't manage kids, we manage activities, is less likely to run into issues. How about that? I really should just start over at this point, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> All right. So instruction as motivation, instruction as management. Um, general feedback on your, um, your classroom management plans. I want to start with that. Um, just some common things that I saw. Not everybody falls into these um, categories. Make sure you cite AMLE in each section each of the like numbered sections um, and each of the subsections. Make sure you reference the big thinkers in adolescent development from week one in at least one section. I've only seen actually one student do that. Um, so the rest of you go back, look at that stuff about adolescent development and work it into at least one section. Um, I saw that many of you, not all of you, but forgot a strategy for redefining fair in section two. Um, so that was, there are some things at the end of chapter one in the Dubé and Hockett book that you can look at for that. Um, another pattern I saw was to don't forget to reference the culturally responsive teaching padlet for section three. You talked about addressing diversity, but some of you didn't reference um, anything from that week of um, instruction. So go back to the Padlet. There were articles, um, book chapters, uh, all, there's the, you know, all kinds of things that you can use. Oops. Um, and then finally, um, the grading and homework section, you should cite more than one or two um, folks in this section just because grading is so contentious. So the more support you have, the better. So do reference the articles from class on grading and homework um, for the grading and homework section, which is section seven, part of section seven. All right, you can pause that if you want to. I don't know why this thing shows up. This is brand new. So why is this still here? I need to delete this because obviously this is not accurate. Okay, um, moving on for rubric item eight. Um, that's what you're working on right now. If we were in class, we would I would ask you if you had questions about it. When we talk, I can ask you about it. This is where we decide instead of a statement, um, Connor pointed out that that's kind of confusing. So you're discussing the one to three concepts you'll use to frame your curriculum and your content areas. Make sure you discuss why those concepts are important to both your content and to middle school students. So you can go back to those top three in the Padlet, the Padlet um, that you posted. Um, I didn't clear that. Uh, so you can go back and look at that. Um, and then you'll discuss how you would use those concepts to unite more than one content area and facilitate interdisciplinary teaching. And it'd be a good idea to discover how those you can make those connections yourself between your two, two, two content areas and as well as how you do so if you were teaching in a team setting. Um, do include a link to your trio's interdisciplinary activity. Um, if you needed to change things, I let you know. Um, if it doesn't say anything, then you did a, if, it, if you didn't get anything, but a, everything looks great, then you're good to go. And then of course, include support and citations um, for this section as always. So if you have questions about that for rubric item eight, you should be completely equipped to do that now um, with the reading and the work that you did on the interdisciplinary activity. Um, you, uh, you can go for that, maybe you've already done so. So questions about that um, during our Zoom hangout. All right, so, oh, remember to look at the exemplars on Canvas. If you're starting to get a little like, I don't know what to do here, go look at the exemplars on Canvas. Canvas. It's not cheating. It's everybody has a model to work from um, in the real world. So, okay, questions. How are you doing with the management plan? What questions do you have? That's what we'll talk about during the Zoom meeting, among other things. All right, now we're moving into the topic of today's uh, today's lesson. This looks ridiculous. Um, what works better for you, the carrot or the stick philosophy? Are you better? Um, are you more motivated by rewards, or are you more motivated by fear and punishment? 
Um, usually it's a combination of the two, um, but students lean more one way or the other. Um, the more compliant students who have, um, who have, you know, a specific kind of upbringing might re respond better to the stick. And perhaps that's what you responded better to. Um, nowadays, because there's so much out there for students, this works a lot better. They need to find a connection. Um, the reward is the connection and they're more likely to, to um, invest if they have that connection. And so that's when we can differentiate for interest because that's the goal is to give students something that can motivate them something that they want to do i want to show you a couple of interest-based things that um we've done or that you could do one is i don't know if you remember this this was the i was going to keep doing this and then well i didn't um, but i started off the year looking at your student surveys and then putting you into table topics groups so we had these TV genre groups. And if you're like, I don't remember Brennan being in my, in my class, that's when he had um, the plague and was not able to join us. But this is, he would have been in this group with his pick. Um, oh, wait, no, you said the, no, yeah, How I Met Your Mother, that goes there, okay. Um, and then you were supposed to share your favorite show and why you liked them. And then um, I had you move later to vacation groups. You got into those groups someplace in the States, so we, we might change our answers now, perhaps. Um, and then, um, and share your favorite spot and why you chose it before we move to a, a content discussion. We did that with this one too. Did this first and then a content discussion. This one, reading question, then a content discussion. Um, and then this one, I was struggling to find commonalities with this group. And so I realized everything they, they chose was orangish like Cheetos or I don't remember, cheese I think was involved here. We had international and then we had some just hardcore chicken lovers, um, chicken nuggets, et cetera. So <laughs> I don't have my surveys with me because I want to go back and see what the orange food was. I'm very, very disappointed that I don't have that. Um, but that's how that um, worked out. And you were going to share your favorite food and then the best place to get it before moving into your content discussion. So that's one way to see for kids to, to find um, – have their interests activated and used in some way, find some common ground um, with their classmates, um, get them up and moving, um, and see that you're honoring the fact that they did an interest survey by using the information in some way rather than just throwing it away. There are two kinds of interests. Um, one is personal interest and the other is situational. Personal is what students bring into the classroom with them. It's an internal thing. It's not anything you had, you had anything to do with. Um, so if a student is obsessed with Star Wars or with the Marvel comics, um, they just brought that in with them. Um, you didn't have anything to do, or maybe they love a certain hobby or they're doing um, Taekwondo or something. Situational ad, um, interest rises in a situation just like that. It's activated by the environment and it's within the teacher's control. Sometimes doing that helps students find that they have an interest. Um, and this is very useful for hooking students. Uh, and so this, we have a little bit more control over. We can't always tap into this. We can try, use, do as best um, as we can, but this we can do on a pretty regular basis by offering choice. Um, these are two kinds of interests. This is his personal, the cat's personal interests represent everything that's happened out here. These sort of rodents have crashed with the small flightless birds. And he's like, school, the idea here is we don't want school to be, we want it to be a doorway into the things he likes. That's kind of gross if you pursue that line of thinking. Um, this here is situational interest because she, they're like, hmm, Brussels sprouts or gingerbread? I think I will pick the gingerbread. And then, hey, I would pick the Brussels sprouts, especially if they're from Jimmy Madison's, which I heard is not coming back, which makes me very sad. Um, oh, so sad. So, uh, when we think about, um, activating interests and giving kids choices, um, we can do that in a low prep way, um, that doesn't take a whole lot of time. 
Um, this is an example um, from some that's based on some work done by some folks. Uh, Walkington is actually the primary researcher on this. Um, what they found was that if they changed the context of story problems, students scored better. If they were able to do something and they were able to choose, they scored better. Um, and so here's an example of the traditional uh, question. They were supposed to count the number of writing utensils, and this is the, the data set. And then they were asked these questions about the data set. Well, I don't know about you, but who cares? Well, some of you care very deeply about writing utensils and have different colored markers. <clears throat> So anyway, but most middle school students will not be that excited about it. Um, if we change the context to one of these three things, video games, social media, sports, and let them pick. Um, this one, it's it's the exact same data set and we would ask the exact same question, but he, questions, but here it's about um, how many hours they that students spend playing video games. Here it's about number of time, number of times people post on social media. Facebook particularly. And here it's um, the number of fouls um, by players, um, each player's total among over the over a five game period. So they would read this and then they would find the same thing, the average, the median, the so the mean, the median, the um, three to five number summary. Um, and what patterns do you see? All right. So little things like that. And then how fun if they do this as a hook or even as homework and then they come back in, they can work it with in like groups or they can work in mixed groups and go, oh my gosh, that's crazy. We had different problems, but it's all the same answer. Fun. All right. Another uh, low prep way to deal with this is four corners interest inquiry groups. Um, and so they uh, can choose, and I actually did this with some of my students. I had some athletes, I had some fashionistas, I had some gamers, and then I had like a kind of like a group. This is like the orange food group. Everybody liked their phones. So if they didn't fall into one of the, these three categories, I knew they'd be excited about this one. Um, and so um, in pairs or groups of three, they did, they went to the corner, they committed to the corner first. Um, kind of like I did, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I had you post your, um, your strategy preferences and it looked like nobody else had posted it. You were the only one posting it because I had them hidden on purpose. So you couldn't be like, oh, what did Taylor do? I'm going to do the same thing. Like you had to post yours without seeing. You can do this with kids too. I had, would have them put their choice on a, you know, a post-it. Um, and have to like commit to it and then go to the corner that was holding the, th you know, that corresponded to the post that they were holding or wearing on their forehead as the case may be. Um, then when they got there in pairs or groups of three, um, they analyzed ads for techniques use. I had ads for sports drinks, hair products, game systems, and phones. Um, and they had to look at the strengths and weaknesses and recommendations for improvement. And then we shared out at the end. So everybody got to see, you know, like at least one of all of the ads, but they got to work with something they were interested in. Um, this is different. This is really appealing to interest um, with the instruction. It's actually interest differentiation. This one's a little different. And I've, I think I've done this with you. Um, if you go to the corner that corresponds to your favorite TV show type, um, so comedy, drama, action, or reality television, discuss why it's your favorite, and then discuss your answer to question five. So this is not technically differentiation. It's just a form of flexible grouping um, and a way to build community by tapping into students' interests. That's fine. Just don't call it differentiation. It's still a good thing to do, um, but for different reasons. And if you're using flexible grouping, that sets the tone for other kinds of differentiation. If kids are used to getting up and moving around and talking to people, then, you know, differentiation happens more smoothly. So not differentiation. Um, here's a low prep example. Um, we're going to introduce you to cells, choose an organelle to study, and then examine the comic of videos on your organelle and make a dating profile um, of what your organelle has to offer the cell and what it needs from the cell in return. So a little bit of choice by just choosing their organelle and hopefully in a high interest product. Social studies, we're going to study the electoral college and then you can share your arguments through the lawyer's opening remarks or an analogy written or visual or a speech to the public. So just different ways to express what you know. 
some choices that are unlike these are pretty these are all pretty quick um some take more time to prepare take some some planning time um and so i'm going to show you each of these um, and then show you what you actually picked and what you're going to be doing in more general try mind um, it's a strategy for it's it's basically saying we all have analytical and practical and creative ways of thinking but usually one is stronger than the other. So we wanna present tasks um, that give kids a chance to enter in the way that they think the most. And Sternberg who developed the strategy has some research showing that when kids were able to pick the way they entered into the task, they scored better on the analytical test at the end. A lot of teachers say, oh, we can't give them practical tasks because the task is gonna be analytical. Well when you give them a practical task and they actually do it, then the information gets in there and it makes sense to them. So they do better on the analytical test. When we give kids these options, we want to make sure we just say option one, option two, option three. Um, but they all get to the same learning goal just through different means of um, thinking or working. OK, second choice profiler. Um, this is a way of connecting students to the working world as well as with roles or audiences for their work. So fostering a little bit of um, uh, uh, authenticity. <laughs> yes. So here's an example from a social studies class. Um, he had students get decide if they wanted to be a band manager, cover artist, lyricist or mu music critic. Um, they and he was studying ancient philosophies, Confucianism or legalism. Um, and then he made um, like music interest groups. So if you like like rock, then he'd pick a band manager, a lyricist and a cover artist and a music critic to put together and they would work together on this. So the manager um, chose a genre created for song titles um, and had explained how that represented either Confucianism or legalism, whatever they were assigned. Um, the cover artist created a cover that had images that represented the belief system. Um, the lyricist wrote and performed a short song or rap, um, and they had to re represent the belief system. Um, and the review of the band, um, they were like, did a Rolling Stone type of review and talked about how well they represented the what they've been assigned. Um, so the common learning goal through all these is, are you representing your belief system correctly? And um, so those of you who have posted already on your um, on your Oh, geez. The Padlet for your reading interactions. I've already seen. Um, I know that Taylor um, said that her she thinks this is the most in, important thing, that it has to attack the same learning goal, not just be all over the place. And that really is like I would say that was a huge aha for me as a first year teacher. I was giving these options and then having to make a new rubric for every option where you should be able to use the same rubric for each of these things. Um, OK, so both of those are technically learning profile. Um, and uh, fall under the umbrella of learning profile, which is ways of thinking, um, both Sternberg and Gardner, who came up with this, the different ways that um, the different jobs that we kind of thought of. Um, but we don't want to pigeonhole. These things are not static. They change all the time. They change according to the topic. So we just want to say option one, option two, option three, or name them the job that they are instead of the intelligence preference that they are. Um, Theoretically, learning profile is supposed to make it more efficient, but I think it's just another way of providing choice. There's not a whole lot of research about this, but we do know there's a lot of research that tells us when we give choices, it increases student um, uh, investment as well as learning. Um, so I prefer to think of learning profile as just a different way of offering choice to motivate students more sound it's just more it's a better way of thinking about it. a more sound research-based way of thinking about it okay the last two options raft um, this is something where you actually follow the row across so one vertical in, in, angle um, speaking to the opposite vertical angle this is a obviously a, a acronym so one vertical angle speaks to an opposite vertical angle in the form of a poem it's like looking in a mirror 
I like this one, my separated twin. Um, you can pause and look at that more if you want to, or if you'd rather, you can look at this one. I like this one. Um, this was one way she anchored them in the same learning goals. They had to use these terms, not all of them, but they had to pull from these terms in their responses. Um, so it really was um, about just following the thing across. So everything is about plants, obviously. Plants, plants. I have new plants in my front yard. <laughs> Sorry, totally unrelated, but I'm very excited about them. Um, okay, that's a raft. Finally, learning menus. Um, learning menus are really kind of like a package of activities, um, but there's some choice involved in each section. So here, this is an example that um, a fifth grade teacher used, and he was from um, he was from the UK. So he had this incredible accent. So when he talked about um, herb encrusted breaded fish, it sounded a lot nicer than what I just said. Um, they had to do both of these and then they got to choose two side dishes and then they chose one dessert. And they got all crazy, like they were so excited about this. And it's just this stuff. I mean, okay. But seriously, you would not have believed how excited they were to do this menu because they got to pick um, the dessert. They could choose one, but if they finished early, they could choose another one. So desserts, the premise behind a dessert is that you are so excited about it that nobody has to tell you that you have to eat it because you want to eat it or do it. OK, so you are going to do a jigsaw activity. You're going to work with your assigned trio group. Um, and those are, sorry, that's not true. It's a quad. It's that's, that's, you're going to work individually. That's what happens when you plan and record on two different days. Um, let's skip this for now. Okay. So these are your, your strategy experts. Um, I, if you were, if you posted on there, there were only 10 posts and Megan, I'm sorry, but your post, your choices didn't show up. It showed that you posted, but your choices didn't show up. Um, so I hope you're okay with raft you, if you posted, you got either your first or your second pick. And if you didn't post, I put you where I needed you to be, um, before I started this module. I just, I looked one last time before I started. So you, if you are, you're going to Lauren, Connor, and Eric, you're going to become experts in TriMind. Ben, Taylor, and Brennan, you're going to become experts in the profiler. Um, William, Braden, and Megan, you're going to become experts in raft. And then Emily, Peyton, and Stephanie will become experts in menus. Um, then this is what's made. These are the groups made in um, in Canvas. Um, after you're gonna you're gonna become an expert by looking through, and I'll show you what that means um, in a minute by looking through the resources and taking some notes. And then you're gonna paste your notes. All gonna paste your notes into a graphic organizer. Um, quad one, you've got Lauren, Ben, William, and Emily. Um, and I believe that's TriMind, Profiler, Raft, and Menus. Um, same thing here, same order. Um, so you've got one of each. See how I did this with the puzzle pieces? Um, one of each of you so that you can learn from them um, about what's important. So you can find your strategies. Um, TriMind is on these pages. Profilers on this, these pages, um, rafts are on these pages, and menus are on these pages. There are also additional examples in the handout in Canvas. So you, you're only going to find one for each content area in these. There are additional examples from the content areas in the handout in Canvas. So please look at that as well. And then, so this is the way it will work. Individually, you're gonna study your assigned strategy and take notes, take notes in a document. You'll later paste it into a group organizer. Take notes about these things, how the strategy is used or its benefits of what you might need to be careful as you design and use this strategy. And then which tools and examples are most helpful. Make sure you include the page numbers. Finally, how might you personally use the strategy and with such as what, with what content or for what purpose? Um, you read them about, uh, you read about them as assessments and that they are ideally 
they're ideal for those, but you can also use them as hooks. You can use them as warmups. You can use them as like classwork sense making activity mm -hmm. activities. So you're not limited to using them as assessments. And you might come up with an idea. Um, they're like, oh, this would be great for just like classwork. So that's what you do individually. And then in mixed strategies quads, you're going to paste your notes into the organizer. Let me pause and show you that. So if we go here to, oh look, there are your groups. Um, and we go to the module for blah, 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 this week. That's what to expect. Um, here's your strategies jigsaw graphic organizer. And it has been downloaded and I cannot get to it. No, we put it in a new window. It's a Google Doc. So you will save it as strategy jigsaw organizer for your group. And then you will paste them. See how these align to those questions that I had on the individual work slide. Um, you, you'll post this in for yours. Um, each uh, team member will. And then find some way to get in touch with, with each other and discuss a little bit about it. OK. So now going back to, oop, hmm. that's interesting. Where are you? Here you are. Okay. Um, your mixed strategies group. Okay. So again, now that you've seen the organizer, you're not going to type right into the organizer because that would be um, annoying to have everybody typing in at the same time. So take notes on a separate piece of um, like a document um, or and then paste it into your group organizer in the second part here. Um, paste your notes into the organizer, get in touch so that you can discuss, take turns sh sharing what you learned about your strategy and ask student group mates to turn to specific guidelines and clarifying examples, templates, like what would help them. And then as a group, decide which strategy is best used in different ways. So um, in doing this work, um, you will be hopefully be able to set yourself up for the next step and for helping students. This is um, these are some comments from a student survey. I think some of them were in the book um, that Grant Wiggins did actually um, of Wiggins and McTie fame. He is um, since passed um, at a very young age. Um, but this he did a survey about kids like what they didn't like about school and most of them said we're bored. This poor kid is like, please, please try to just shake it up sometimes. Give us a variety of work and activities and don't just stick to the same type of lesson every day. So they need routine, but they need some some spice in there, too. I think it's the Mary Poppins principle. Just a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Like we're still teaching them content, but we're trying to make it you know, like taste good, feel good, be fun. Um, ultimately, I think that when we keep our students in mind, it, that's a, like when we think about what they want and what they need and what will be of interest to them, um, we don't have to think about the carrot stick whole thing. It's, it's more about our hearts reaching theirs. I know it sounds corny, but I believe that. Um, so what is due? Um, you are going to craft a discussion. Well, you're going to. Let's start down here with this last one. You're going to create an interest task using any of the four strategies studied during the jigsaw. So you might do the jigsaw and you studied trimine and you're like, ooh, I like raft so much better than you can do a raft. Make sure you unite the options with at least one learning goal. I would say either an understanding or a skill. When you see the slides, you'll see that says U or S. So have like a common understanding that each um, that each option is, is united to or have a common SOL or have a common skill. Just one thing that you can say each of these has in common. Normally, I ask you to create like a whole set of learning goals, knowledge, understanding and skills. Um, I ask you to create a rubric to like I'm not doing any of that. I just want you to do I ask you to normally I ask you to do like student directions that are more in detail, as you saw in the book. Um, but for purposes of this crazy, crazy semester, you're going to just do just create the task itself along with one learning goal. Um, and that's that's it. It can be the one you studied or it can be a different one. 
Um, you're going to craft a discussion of how you will use instruction to motivate middle school learners, and you'll discuss providing students with choices, using data from interest surveys, et cetera. What are you going to do to tap in to student interests and to motivate them? Be sure to cite sources. This might be one of those places where you want to refer to adolescents from the needs of adolescents from week one, especially if you haven't already done so. So looking at their need to kind of have some control, um, their, their need to, you know, for affinity, those kinds of things. Um, so that's your classroom management plan. That's rubric item part of it's the it's 8b basically rubric item 8b the first one was 8a um so to sum up work individually to study your strategy then together to complete your strategy jigsaw and post the organizer in canvas before our next class compose individually draft an interest task with at least one common learning goal and craft your discussion of instruction as management for your management plan. It says rubric item nine, but it's it's 8B. Oof, I'm the worst. And then you're gonna read and post your interactions. You're gonna examine the Canvas resources on your chosen exceptionality. You're gonna take notes on, and this is gonna be like, instead of saying like five important things from each source, I want five important things in answer to each of these prompts how to recognize this exceptionality in students, and how to help students with this exceptionality succeed in the classroom. So no matter how many sources you examine, you just need these bullet points. And if you don't see stuff that you want from those sources, then you can ask questions instead of a bullet point. So you might have two bullet points that you found and three questions you have. I don't, that's fine. Um, just wanna see that you have interacted with it and that will get us ready for the next thing. So, and I will post these slides um, on Canvas when I post the video. This is gonna be a longer video, so it might take a while to upload, but I wanna go back to Canvas and show you um, that. Um, the, those resources, here you go. So. Um, some of these are hidden that you, so you won't see them. These are general. Everybody can look at these. Here are three things for, um, attention, um, problems. Here's two for autism spectrum disorders. And then here's some for emotional and behavioral disorders. Um, these are a bit longer. These talk a lot about this and you can find a lot out there on it. Um, but these are the ones I want you to look for. And then again, um, your interactions are, oops, sorry, that's assessment. Um, your interactions are um, examining the, the how to recognize this exceptionality, five markers of like this person might have, might be on the spectrum, um, or five markers of this student might have an attention problem. And then how to help students with this exceptionality in the classroom. So like you can do this, 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 and this, or you can do this, 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 and I wonder about this, and I saw my teacher do this, is that a thing? Um, five important things for each bullet. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to try to recraft this um, slide that is null and void since I changed how I was doing it. Um, I'm going to recraft that before I post the slides. Um, but I've spelled out very clearly what you should do in each of these two slides right here. Um, so that tells you what to do individually. You don't have to do this like this we're going to ask if you have questions we'll talk about what questions you have um when we meet in zoom so anything you're feeling like freaked out about right now write down your questions and then we'll talk about them in a few minutes when we get together um through zoom and i very very much um am looking forward to seeing you um to seeing your sweet faces um that's the best part of my week is when i get to see you guys so i will see you soon um, and hang in there. You're doing great. <laughs>